Hi guys, this is Michael from Nomadic Insights. In today's video, I want to briefly explore the different kinds of insurance products that are available to U.S. expats as well as British expats and Canadian expats. So most people know they need some sort of health insurance, so they'll buy a travel insurance policy. A travel insurance policy assumes you live somewhere and you have primary insurance coverage. So what do I mean by primary insurance coverage? So in the United States, your private health insurance, or if you're in the UK, your NHS coverage would be considered your primary health insurance. This is gonna pay for things like pre-existing conditions. If you have, say, depression or anxiety and you need medication for that, this insurance will cover you. Travel insurance, on the other hand, is not going to cover those pre-existing conditions. It only covers things related to injuries while you're traveling. So travel insurance is also not good for things like cancer care, um, you know, heart attacks, potentially, but not good for the long term care for an ongoing chronic condition you might develop while you're traveling. Travel insurance is not really health insurance. To have actual health insurance as a traveler, you need something called private medical insurance or you need to enroll in the public health system of the country you're living in or purchase a local policy. Frankly, I would recommend private medical insurance in lieu of travel insurance if you're planning on living abroad for over you know, six months in a foreign country. You need to have some sort of pri primary insurance coverage, and this is generally going to be private medical insurance. You can use travel insurance as a supplemental to your private medical insurance, but really what you need is PMI or private medical insurance while you're traveling. A number of US providers like Cigna and Aetna have international private medical insurance offerings and these products are built generally for expats or for relocation services. I generally would recommend using one of these companies or products. They have the reputations, they have the global network of providers you'll need, and for most markets, you are covered. Now, you could be traveling in a market or in a country where these policies have an exclusion, so it's very, very important to thoroughly read your insurance declarations while you're traveling abroad. If you have any questions about the different kinds of insurance policies, feel free to leave me a question in the comments below, and I'll be more than happy to help however I can. But again, travel insurance is very different than private medical insurance, which is what you really need when you travel internationally. Major providers of travel insurance like Safety Wing, um, even your credit card coverage, if you're paying for a trip and you think, oh, I'm covered with like products like Revolut, Oot, are not going to cover you. You really want some sort of private medical insurance product. Costs you're looking at generally for premiums if you're in your 20s or 30s are going to be a couple hundred dollars a month, but you're going to get you know, up to $2 million in coverage, which to pay for cancer treatment, you know, will cover you in most countries. Um, these policies are really not for everyday care where the cost might be really inconsequential, but there are 20 year olds who get cancer. There are 30 year olds who get cancer. And you do need to think about if you're living as a long-term expat, you know, what happens if I get cancer? How do I pay for that? How do I get care? Um, you know, your travel insurance will not pay for you. And you could have a problem where if you're a British expat, you go back to the UK, you know, you could have trouble getting NHS coverage if you don't have payment credits in some cases. There are all sorts of issues with this care. 
and getting access even in Europe for cancer care if you're not registered as living there can be quite difficult. You'll get emergency care, but will you get the best care as someone who's enrolled in the system? No. Would I take that risk as somebody who's living abroad? No. Now again, if you can't afford proper insurance coverage, we shouldn't be an expat. Sorry to say. But again, feel free to let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be more than happy to see if I can help.